plunged our country into $16 trillion worth of debt. The $16 trillion, I, I, we, we'll have to give Bush a, a certain amount of credit for that, too, but... They, <laughs> <laughs> They certainly didn't, certainly wasn't the Obama administration that, that that at least allowed policies that created the greatest financial crisis and required an appropriate uh, stimulus on the part of the government. But in the end, I find it totally unproductive, and that fellow at 86 probably is, should have found it out by now, to discuss politics with people. I mean, you're going to have roughly half agree with you and half disagree. So if you, if you look at this, the trouble is Charlie and I, even though he's a Republican, I'm a Democrat, we really don't disagree as much as you might think based on that. Otherwise, I could say you could just take your pick here and vote for one of us and ignore the other one, and, and uh, we would offer a little something for everyone. The, the, I, the amount of deficit spending in the last four years, the amount of stimulus provided, fiscal stimulus provided, I think has been quite appropriate in relation to the threat to the economy that was posed by the greatest panic in my lifetime. I mean, you literally had a situation where Berkshire Hathaway was getting a phone call because General Electric needed money, and we were the last stop. Uh, that is quite a situation. It's quite a situation when Freddie and Fannie go into conservatorship and WAMU and Wachovia uh, fail and where money market funds have 5% drained out of them in three days and with the panic underway. So I, we, we needed fiscal stimulus in this country. Now, the real question is how do you get off of that? And that, that is a problem, but it's, it's a lesser problem that we would have had if we decided to follow some austerity program, in my view at least, uh, starting in 2008. And how do you feel about that, Charlie? I agree with you completely. No. And by the way, so did George W. Bush. Yeah. That was bipartisan. That We were in so much trouble that on both sides of the aisle, we finally got together and supported these extreme interventions. George Bush issued the, probably the 10 greatest words of economic thought in history. Most people don't give him credit for that. They think of Adam Smith and comparative advantage and Keynes and animal spirits and all those guys. But George Bush went out there in September of 2008 and said, if money doesn't loosen up, this sucker can go down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is a man that knew how to get to the point. <laughs> And I give him great credit for it, enormous credit. And good, plenty, of, plenty of members of his party did not agree with what he was doing. But uh, uh, we owe him a lot in, in that respect. And, you know, we, our leaders, generally speaking, of both parties, once they were in the terrible trouble, uh, I think have behaved uh, or came up with policies that, that in general were were very useful in avoiding something far worse than what we experienced. Uh, and they weren't easy to do. I mean, they took some guts. So I am not, I am disturbed by a national debt that grows in respect to GDP. In fact, I wrote an article in the New York Times, an op-ed piece in 2000, I think, maybe 2009 or 2010, talking about this very problem. But, you know, we came out of World War II with a debt higher, a gross or net debt higher in relation to GDP than we have now. And uh, uh, people were predicting terrible things at that time because of that situation. And the country has done sensationally. It, uh, the real danger is that it just continues to grow and it gets easier to uh, uh, print money than exercise some discipline, but we've encountered far worse problems uh, than we face now. I mean, this, this, this is not our country's toughest hour by, by a huge margin, and I think we will do 
fine, but with a lot of, of bickering and, and uh, uh, kind of nonsense that will bother you when you read about it day to day, but when you look at it from the viewpoint of history 10 or 20 years from now, you will not be that disturbed. Charlie? Well, I agree with you about George W. Bush, and I like these nonpartisan episodes when we get together and do things. And I also think that our current problems are quite confusing. In fact, if you aren't confused, I don't think you understand it very well. <laughs> that sort of immunizes you from everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, How bothered are you by the uh, level of debt in relation to GDP? Well, I don't think there's any one fixed ratio that is written in, in the stars as required. As a matter of fact, most of the debt, as I conceive it, is not even counted in what you call debt. The off-the-books debt of the United States is bigger than the on-the-books debt. All the present value of future promises that are unfunded. That can be changed, however. <laughs> yes. But, yeah. And, but you say can be changed, but are we really going to take Social Security away from somebody who's worked a lifetime? Well, we I don't think it's very likely. No, no. <laughs> but Social Security is not a killer, actually, in terms of, if you have a, if you have a GDP that rises a couple percent of in real terms, well, of course, more that, terms. that's the great problem. All of our problems are trivial. If GDP will just rise at 2% per annum per capita, all these problems that the Republicans are screaming about fade into insignificance if we can do that. And, uh, but you've got to have policies that enable you to do it. And I'm not sure we always do that very well. Okay, stay tuned. Some say that.